What have you got for me? Can you talk a little bit about, uh, in the pilot there are a lot of references to Supergirl being a role model for young girls, and obviously it's a show that carries very heavy feminist connotations. Can you speak a little bit about how that influenced the creation, the development, what you want to do going forward? Um, I think that it's... Look, on the one hand, I'm really... I think Supergirl stands on her own as just a great hero whose story deserves to be told. I think it's sort of a shame that it's such a big deal, but the only way we're going to make it not a big deal is to continue to have real representation and a variety of representation. And so if we can help to do that and to start to level the playing field, then then we take that responsibility really seriously, you know. Greg Berlanti and I work on a lot of shows, and you'll notice across all of them there are strong female characters. It's something that's important to us personally, and also important to our audience. And and I do think, so we take that responsibility very heavily, but we also just think she's a really cool, really interesting character. But certainly, like, I have friends with daughters, and I want them to be able to look up to a superhero who's not overly sexual, who's not a damsel in distress, who's strong and capable and powerful, but also wrestles with insecurity and all the things that people, you know, and I also, but at the same time, I think it's important for boys to see it too. I think it's just as important. And I think that that is, we definitely take it seriously. We're definitely, there's a little bit of meta to the show and we wanted to address it, even down to calling her Supergirl, which I think we handle really well in the pilot. Um, but for us, it's like, the, on the first layer, it's just a great story and a great character. And on the second level, we can do something that we think that more people need to be doing. Can you talk about the decision to bring Kat Grant in and the role that she was? Was that just about having her mentor, uh, boss figure also be a female? Or was there something specific about that character? That you well, we love the character. We love also, you know, the... Um, the, first of all, Calista Flockhart is amazing. We're so, so happy to have her. And um, it is about, look, there are actually a number of Supergirls on this show. Mm -hmm. And there is Kat Grant, and there's Alex, who's a character we didn't really create, um, and there's Carl. And so I think we wanted that diversity, right? That there isn't one way for a woman to be a hero, mm -hmm. and she can be a boss. She can be like uh, physically strong, and she can sort of do everything in between. Uh, and so I do think, like, yes, it's really nice to have again in terms of representation another female who's in charge. Uh, but it's also just a really fun dynamic, and you know, a show that a uh, film that Andrew, Ali, Greg, and I all love is Working Girl, and so there's a little bit of that in there too. So any way to honor Mike Nichols is, is a good <laughs> idea, as far as I'm concerned. Fair. Uh, Greg Berlanti said early on, before any of the other announcements have come out, that he knew that the secret to this was finding the right girl to bring this character to life. Did you know it? When you uh, found we, well, what's funny is, so David Rappaport, who also cast Flash and Arrow, at, like accidentally, Steven was the first person to audition for Arrow. And then Grant was the first person to audition for Flash. So David, at this point, knowing how superstitious Greg Berlanti can be, actually made Melissa come back from vacation so she could be the first one uh, because he had that gut. So David was the first one who knew it. We knew that we couldn't do the show, and frankly we wouldn't do the show if we couldn't find the right girl. It's a very complicated part. You have to have comedic talent, you have to have emotional talent, you have to have dramatic talent, and you have to have like a really, really big range. And so. Uh, like, honestly, for me, when Melissa auditioned because she was first, I thought, oh, it's going to be so easy to cast this. And then we saw hundreds of really talented actresses that um, are, they're great, but none of them were Melissa, and, not, and Melissa is Carl, as far as we're concerned. And we have said it repeatedly that we wouldn't have done this without Melissa. Finding her was the secret to this show. She is so phenomenal, and I am just so excited for audiences to get to see how much she can do. You got a taste of it at Glee, you got a taste of it in Whiplash, but I think to really see all the cards, all the tools she has in her arsenal is just gonna be so much fun. Was there hesitancy to include Superman in that mythology so prominently? Um, yeah, but I think for, for the reason, one of the reasons at least is, this isn't a story about Superman, and it isn't the story about, it's not the lesser, oh, we couldn't get Superman, let's do Supergirl. We wanted to do Supergirl. She has such an interesting backstory. Unlike Superman, she spent 12, 13 years on Krypton without any powers. She was a normal girl who had her whole world taken away from her. 
And she also, so she arrived at like 13, and she arrived at an, into a world that tells teenage girls to suppress all the things that make them feel different. And so these powers are something that she saw as a curse. They were not this blessing, they were not this like great destiny. And so for us, the fun of this show is to see her embrace all of who she can be. So Cara Zarell to us is like just an awesome character that hasn't been uh, showcased enough. So it's not, you know, so it's really about that. And so for us, it's, it's you know, uh, I remember early on, Greg, Lancy, we, yeah, Susan Romer on Warner Brothers Television was like, what about Supergirl? And I turned to Greg and I was like, Supergirl, 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 like, you have to do Supergirl. And he was like, ah. And then he called me and he goes, I figured it out. It's um, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Ginger Rogers had to do everything Fred Astaire did, but backwards and in heels. And quite, like, and I think that's a great way of looking at it. It's also way more fun to tell that story, you know? And it's a story that people really deserve to see get um, a full and accurate portrayal. Now, you use the word fun. Uh, obviously, that's something that has been a big driving narrative behind this, too. If there's anything that gets talked about almost as much as the feminism, it's the fact that it's a very light, very happy show. Um, can you tell us what went into that decision? Well, I think, first of all, Andrew, Ali, Craig, and I are, also, are all huge fans of the Dick Donner Superman movies, the original Christopher Reeve ones. I don't know if it's our age or whatever, but those were really deeply implanted on our psyches. And the tone of those movies was just really fun, you know? And it doesn't mean that the stakes don't feel real. It doesn't mean that there isn't danger. It doesn't mean that characters won't die. But the hopefulness of that world, the fun of that world for us was just, uh, it was irresistible. And I think that, look, people have hard lives. People have to work at jobs they don't like. They struggle to feed their families. They, there's enough darkness in the world that to give people an hour of hope and excitement and possibility is, is uh, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a really good thing. And if you're really feeling dark, you can watch Arrow too. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll just ask, Alex came off as kind of the model sister in that pilot episode, but there was a single shot of her when her new sister was being delivered by Superman that made it, having that as a sister would not be easy. No, I mean, Alex was, you know, she was the golden child of her family. She was kind of great at everything, and then suddenly this girl comes along who's the same age who has literal superpowers. So there is a real complexity to that sister dynamic. You know, what's also interesting is that as we learn about Alex and the pilot, uh, in a lot of ways she's more of a superhero than Kara is at the start, you know, and, and without the uh, superpowers, which is also great in terms of varied representation. So I think the dynamic between them is complicated, interesting, and real, you know, and, um, and I think it's definitely... It, what's good What's good for Alex is that it drove her to be the best version of herself, just as Kara tried not to be the best version of herself. So Kara really can look up to Alex and as a model and as a way to kind of embrace all of what she's capable of being. Thank you so much. Thank you.